You were listening to the Afro Sensual Podcast. Welcome back to the Afro Sensual Podcast, where we explore the journey of owning our magic and becoming our most authentic selves. I'm your host, Neela Ray. And we are talking about the importance of fitness today. Now, you either hate or love this topic. (laughs) And my goal today is to make you love it or at least consider loving it. I have been on my fitness journey for as long as I could remember way back when I started dancing in the early 2000s. Ooh, I've always loved movement and At one point in my life, I really thought that I was going to become a dancer and choreographer, move to LA and be one of those uh, choreographers, you know, the ones who do the dope videos (laughs) uh, that we saw back in the day. And all of that changed when I was diagnosed with scoliosis in 2007. I was in so much pain. I quit dancing altogether and haven't been back since, which is, you know, a little sad, but we're going to get into that. Um, I've always loved movement and this was my first time dealing with a major setback in life. I mean, I was in my early twenties and I didn't know how to handle it. Dancing was my dream. It was all I could think about, okay? This was going to put me on the map, okay? A year later, I moved to Virginia to start this new life. You know, I met this guy, fell in love, thought I was going to get married, early 20s, I know. (laughs) That's another podcast episode in itself, but never, nonetheless. I start this new life and... This is when I first was introduced to the science art of chiropractic. I think that's how you say it, chiropractor, whatever. For three years, I endured weekly visits, getting adjusted, my neck, my back, my hips. And this was such a painful experience that I was going through, you know, at a very early age and not really understanding what was happening with my body. All I knew was that I had excruciating back pain and I was listening to these doctors telling me, oh, you, you know, you've got scoliosis, you got to do this. We don't want to do surgery. It's too late. You know, I didn't want to wear a back brace. I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? So I went to the chiropractor. Now I was going to the chiropractor for three years with no result to my pain. I was just dealing with this pinched nerve in my spine and my hips were tight. I mean, I was a hot mess. Okay. And so after about three years, I decided I had enough, right? I wanted relief. I wanted to rid my body of this pain. I didn't know what else to do. I was already somewhat familiar with yoga back then. Um, Really wasn't consistent with it. I was in a new relationship that took me down a road of life. (laughs) And all of this had such a havoc on my well-being. So I did what was in my spirit to do at that point in time. I got back on the mat to do yoga because what else was I going to do, right? I just needed some relief. And when I got back on my mat to do yoga, my entire life changed. I was almost pain-free. And I hadn't felt such relief since before I was diagnosed. I stopped going to the chiropractor and Of course, years later, found out down the road that that was a no-no. You're not supposed to go to the chiropractor that much. If anything, once a year. 
Okay, so a little PSA. Um, if you're told that you need to go, to, unless you are in a severe car accident, in which I was not. So if you're not severely hurt, please take precaution. Do not go to the chiropractor more than every six months to a year, something like that. And so once I stopped going to the chiropractor and picked up yoga, doing it consistently, I was dedicated, okay? I signed up for gym memberships. I was just going and doing it. All types of different yoga, hot yoga, hatha yoga. I mean, you named it, okay? I, I was there. If it said yoga in it, I was there. And after a number of years of rediscovering yoga, being dedicated, I hit a wall, right? I hit a wall because I was just practicing yoga, yoga, yoga. I realized that I needed another form of movement. And so naturally I gravitated by, I gravitated to belly dancing. And if you are not familiar <laughs> with this art and dance, you will be shown how well you really move. Okay. Cause child, I was not moving well, even though I had been doing yoga to alleviate the back pain, my body still was not trained in certain ways and with belly dancing you really have to use a lot of core and I was my core was weak <laughs> okay however I did not allow that to deter me I kept at it for I think it was like eight weeks or something like that and I was so proud of myself for one returning to the art of dance and two sticking with something re- acquainting myself with my first love. And over the years, I kept up with my yoga practice. I ventured off and tried different movement. I even tried Pilates back then. And nothing is as grounding as yoga. Yoga keeps me in tune with myself, with spirit. And there's so many benefits to yoga. I mean, I could go on and on and on. But anyway, then enters life. <laughs> okay, years after finally found finding my stride with yoga and, and getting back to dance, life happened. And life was lifing around 2011, 2012, when I went through a devastating breakup of five years. And if you've ever been through a really hard breakup, you know what it does to you mentally, emotionally, physically. Depression debilitates you. You don't want to move. You lose interest in everything that makes you feel good. And life is shitty, right? When you're just depressed and you can't really find your way out of it. You can't pull yourself out of a funk. And I know for me, I'm a bit of an overthinker. And so when I spiral, I spiral. You deal with it the best way you can, right? And of course, we all know that we should exercise and eat well. And, you know, we hear, we hear it. We know, we know what to do. It's how do you do it when you're in the thick of depression, right? When you just don't have the energy to move or you don't want to move. <laughs> what I love about my wellness journey is that I have a toolbox that I can return to time and time again, and it's always there like a, like a little box of jewels just waiting to be picked up, right? This wellness journey, fitness journey, it ebbs and flows just like life, you know? And I've learned that sometimes it's okay to put down a tool and walk away and find another path and pick up another tool. You know, we call this a practice for a reason. And that's because we never truly master it. We have to come back to it time and time again. And we can return to it anytime we need it. 
or when we're forced to need it. And this is what I love about my movement practice, especially. What I've learned is this. We need a variety of movement to truly feel well and good inside of our body. And it doesn't have to be as complicated as we sometimes make it. For instance, taking a morning or evening walk does wonders for our mental, emotional, and physical well-being. And sometimes that's all we have the time and energy for, and that's okay. When I was suffering with knee tendonitis last year, I couldn't even walk. And that made me so much more grateful for the ability to do so now because when you just don't, when you have pain in your knee and you can't walk, I mean, I I don't know, it does something to you mentally, (laughs) Um, emotionally, because you know, when you're used to walking, you, we kind of take it for granted, right? We just assume that our body parts are going to work and all of a sudden you wake up and your fucking knee is out of commission. You're like, what the fuck? But anyway, I went through the emotions. I talked about it on a previous episode. I went through it, you know, and taking movement for granted has really taught me how to cherish it that much more. And so I want to share with you a couple of things, a couple of nuggets that I picked up on why movement is so important. One of the reasons it is important is because it removes toxins from the body. So when we sweat, we release all of the negative energy, stuck emotions, uh, bad toxins from the environment, from other people. (laughs) And so sweating that out through our pores helps to just get it out of the body. It keeps our blood fresh and flowing. You know, when we exercise and bring in that new oxygen, we bring in new energy, right? in which we need to help our blood just keep flowing. It also strengthens our respiratory system. And there's a lot of people out there who are runners. My hat is off to you because I do not run. I cannot, I can't say I cannot. I don't like to run. (laughs) Let's just keep it real. I don't like to run, but running is a great way to strengthen your respiratory system or doing any form of cardio or aerobics. I recently was, um, I hate saying the word diagnosed, but I got some blood work done and it came back as high cholesterol, which I'm like, how did that happen? It's probably the carbs. (laughs) I ain't gonna lie. Okay. Your girl loves some rice and pasta and bread. And so aerobics is one of the um, ways that I have been trying to combat that by just getting in some light cardio a couple of times a week. It helps strengthen the heart, the lungs, and it's just, it makes you feel good, right? Speaking of feeling good, it helps to clear negative feelings. It helps with your emotions. It helps keep your emotions in check. And yoga is really good for that, yin yoga, especially because when we are in yin, doing and holding the poses, that time on the mat really helps you to tune in to yourself, to tune in to any area of the body where you're holding tension, and you give yourself permission to relax and release. So I love yoga for that. And learning, right? Exercising and moving increases your cognitive ability to learn and retain information. And also it helps with your relationships. You feel more connected with yourself as well as others. So these are some of the things that I've learned. And it's so amazing to move your body because our bodies are designed to move, right? So when we're not moving, our energy is stagnant. So where does that energy go, right? When we're overthinking, when we're depressed, when we're sad, mad, whatever, where does that energy go if we're not moving, right? And I definitely experienced this for months 
when my knee was out of commission. And I'm so glad to be back on the mat, (laughs) moving my body again. Thank God for uh, physical therapy that I spent months doing and rehabbing my knee. And I've finally gotten the clear to get back on the mat and practice Pilates. And I'm so excited. It feels so good. And I am giving myself a little eight-week challenge before my 40th birthday next month to really just get back into shape and just feeling overall the best that I can feel as I turn 40. And so the last year (laughs) has been a journey dealing with these health issues, the knee, stress, depression. And although it was hard to move my body during these times of distress, I am that much more grateful for the experience because I recognize the value in movement in any kind of way, whether it's stretching, walking around the block, around the track, um, Pilates, dancing, like any form of movement that you can do is truly good for you. And I've learned not to stress out about it, right? Sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves to just have this perfect routine or move a a perfect way or, you know, whatever. Just get outside, right? Like that deserves credit too, right? Just getting outside, just stretching, you know? And I like to tell my clients and my students that if you just stretch, five to 10 minutes a day, I'm telling you, you will notice a difference. You will feel better. Your energy will will flow through your body better. And so I'm just really excited about this new journey that I'm embarking on um, because even with just a few weeks of continuous movement, I feel better emotionally, mentally, and especially in my body. And of course, that gives you a little bit of a confidence boost, right? When you're just feeling good, you're like, yeah, girl, you look in the mirror like, hey. <laughs> in the episode, How to Deepen the Connection with Your Body, I do mention the other bodily changes that I was experiencing with the cyst on my ovary and the bloating in my midsection, which is also part of perimenopause. And I'll be talking more about this on next week's episode, so be sure to look out for that. And I'll also share how I've been managing my nutrition during this time. But movement is also important for digestive, right? Because it gives your body a chance to process whatever you've been eating. And a lot of times what happens when we are depressed or not feeling good, uh, you know, emotionally, we tend to emotionally eat and overeat. And which if we're not moving that energy around that food around, you know, we tend to gain weight and it leads us down a whole rabbit hole. So movement is so important. And some of the benefits that I've been experiencing since getting back to my fitness have made me want to keep up with my weekly routine, even if I miss a day or two, which is okay, okay? The key is to make the effort twice, three times a week. And when you start noticing the difference in how you feel, I'm telling you, you will want to keep it up. So a few things that I have experienced are increased endorphins. And I'm sure you've heard the term, Okay, those feel-good hormones that flood the brain after your workout, (laughs) they are produced by the body to relieve stress and pain and make you feel a sense of euphoria. So this actually decreases anxiety and depression, right? So naturally, when we move our bodies, we feel better. I know it's tough. Trust me. Increased sex drive. Okay, so as we age, our bodies change and sexual desire can decrease depending on your lifestyle. Pilates especially has helped me tap into the center of my body by strengthening my core. And that's where a lot of our emotions for women are stored. Also in the hips, Pilates deals with a lot of um opening the hips and using the hip strength for certain movements. And so As we strengthen and lengthen our muscles 
in those areas, it actually it actually makes sex more pleasurable. I've also experienced an increased focus. I'm easily distracted <laughs> if I'm not feeling um, grounded and centered in my body. And actually working out activates the blood cells. It sends oxygen to your brain and throughout your body. And this is what helps you feel focused and energized. You might be a little tired at first, but once you keep up with the routine, you do feel more focused and you do have more energy. Enhanced sleep. Now, this is a big one because it depends on when you work out, okay? So if you're working out in the morning, you're more likely to benefit from a good night rest than if you were to work out in the evening. So if you do work out in the evening, try not to do extensive cardio because this actually raises your heart rate and can hinder your body's ability to rest properly. So those are some of the benefits of fitness and moving your body for well-being. And I hope that this inspires you to take up some form of movement. Find out what you like, what you enjoy, whether it's cycling, bike riding. Maybe start off with walking 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. The key is just to find something that you enjoy doing so that way it doesn't feel like a chore right moving your body and exercising should not be a daunting task that you hate <laughs> and that you avoid if you hate working out you're not doing a movement that you enjoy right sex is a great part of that you know sex is also a workout um, and you get those feel-good endorphins. So, hey, if you got to kick up the sex and make it a little bit aerobic, I mean, you know, you got to do what you got to do, <laughs> okay? So, thank you for listening to the podcast today. If you've enjoyed the episode, please share it with a friend. And if you'd like to join me on my eight-week 40 and fit challenge, be sure to check the episode description for the link to subscribe to my YouTube playlist and the channel. And I'll be sharing all of my journey there with some live classes, some vlogs, and also some community posts. So be sure to check that out. You can also follow me on my Facebook page and Instagram for some inspiration and updates as well. And of course, don't forget to join my newsletter in case you miss anything on social because y'all know them algorithms be algorithm-y, okay? <laughs> See you next week.